Paul, could you stand, please? Could you firstly give the court your full name? Paul Bedford. And your age? 15. And your date of birth? 16th for the 2nd, 86. Thank you. And where do you live at the moment? Uh, flat 26, Riverside Place, Hammersmith. Thank you. Mr Abrahams, can the charges be read to Paul at this stage? Madam, they can. Thank you. Paul, remain standing for the moment. The first charge against you is that on the 7th of August this year, at Queensmall Car Park, West 8, you took a grey Ford Fiesta registration N829YOC for your own use without the consent of the owner or other lawful authority, and while it was taken and before it was recovered, damage was caused to that vehicle. Do you understand that charge? Yeah. Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty. It's also said that on the same date at the same place, you drove that vehicle without insurance. Do you understand that? Yeah. Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And finally, you drove the vehicle when not in accordance with the licence authorising you to drive. Do you understand that? Yeah. Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Thank you. Sit down for the moment. The court will now hear the brief facts. Thank you, Mr Smith. Thank you. Madam, as you've heard, Paul pleaded guilty to three matters today. Uh, the facts are as follows. Madam, it was the multi-storey car park at the Queen's Mall Shopping Centre in W8 when Paul and others took a Ford Fiesta motor vehicle which the owner had left while she was out shopping. Madam, closed circuit television in the car park recorded Paul and two others breaking into the vehicle via the rear window. Madam, property in the vehicle was interfered with and damaged. However, the Crown cannot say who caused that damage, so no charges arise. Madam, the closed circuit television system in the car park caught Paul driving the vehicle out of the car park into Hammersmith. Madam, the car was driven around Hammersmith and damaged by crashing into a lamp post before being recovered. Madam, I can confirm Paul is of no previous convictions. And Madam, unless there's anything further I can assist the court with. No questions, Mr Smith. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Mr Abraham, would you now like to mitigate on behalf of Paul? May it please you, Madam. As you've heard, uh, Paul is a 15-year-old. This is the first time that he has appeared before any court of law and has pleaded guilty to the offence at the first available opportunity. He realises the foolishness of his actions and is extremely remorseful. His actions were entirely impulsive and opportunistic. And he asked me to express his deep remorse. Paul. Uh, has a very close relationship with his mother, who is also very supportive of him. Uh, I can say that although uh, the family background is a stable one, uh, there have been some problems of late with uh, Paul's stepfather. And uh, I can tell you now that uh, Paul has uh, begun truanting recently. And so I think there are clearly some problems which uh, need to be addressed. It's hoped that uh, the bench might feel that in the circumstances, a referral order is the appropriate way of uh, dealing with this matter. Madam, I think that's where I'll leave my mitigation. Unless there are any further questions you'd like to ask me. Okay, Mr. Abrams, do you have any questions? Have any questions? No questions, thank you, Mr. Abrams. Would you stand up, please, Paul? Is there anything you'd like to tell the court today about you or your circumstances? Um, I'm sorry, it was stupid of me, I won't do it again. Mm. Anything else about the circumstances of the... Yeah. Uh, no. Have you any questions? Do you have any questions? Oh, you may sit down, Paul. Mrs Bedford, would you like to stand up, please? Is there anything you'd like to tell the court today about Paul or the circumstances? Um, well... Paul's having sort of quite a difficult time. Um, he's not getting on with his stepfather at the moment. Um, and he's not going to school, and it's been a bit, bit of a tough time, really. Um, I know that he's very sorry what he did. Thank you, Mrs. Bedford. Retire. The bench will retire. 
Paul, would you stand up, please? We have taken into account the circumstances of the offence and what Mr. Abrams and your mother have said on your behalf. For the matter of aggravated vehicle taking, we have decided to make a referral order for six months and to disqualify you from driving for 12 months. Now sit down as we need to speak to your mother. Mrs. Bedford, please stand. This is an important opportunity for Paul and for you. You are required to cooperate fully with the youth offender team and support Paul in reaching and keeping the agreement. And we order that you attend the meetings with the panel. Do you understand? Yeah. You may sit down. For the other matters, for the no insurance, there is no separate penalty and your license will be endorsed. And for the matter of driving other than accordance with your license, there is no separate penalty and your license will be endorsed. You may leave the courtroom, but please wait to speak to the youth offender team officer who is sitting at the back of the court. In court, you got three people telling you what to do. In the panel meeting, they just talk nice to you. In the court, they don't. Um, we try and be formally informal, if that's possible. And obviously, we can't be too informal because it needs to be, it needs to be slightly intimidating without being too much. I think it can be an intimidating place for the workers, so, and and for parents, so. Um, how much more a young person it's very impersonal you know um they don't know the person in front of them they, they apart from asking his name and address they've never spoken to him or are likely to ever again and i think that you know it's, it's sort of too impersonal some young offenders come in and think it's a great joke and that's quite difficult to deal with um, some young offenders come in and are absolutely terrified that's probably easier to, to deal with because we can talk to them and make sure they're understanding what's going on. I think altogether it's an experience that many young people do find very daunting and they may feel just left out of it. When a young person is in a youth court and decisions have been made about them, they rarely have, an, have the opportunity to say what they think it is that will help them stop offending. We do now. Um, ask the young offender if they've got anything to say about what they've done, why they've done it, how they've done it, what they think the reactions are. So they do have more now, more chance to speak, but most of them can't, don't want to speak about it. And so, although we give them the opportunity, a very few can actually put into words how they feel about it or what they think they've done and what they think the, the results are. What happens in the youth court is literally they're just asked to answer questions and um, they are actually spoken to directly a lot less um, than in a panel situation but also their questions are usually directed through their defence solicitors.